Eric Berg studied for his chiropractic degree and graduated in 1988. Unlike some of the subjects of my previous videos, Eric Berg is not lying about his qualifications. He is a registered chiropractor, and in the US at least, it is normal for chiropractors to use the title of doctor. But he's not a doctor of medicine, so he can't prescribe any drugs, perform any surgeries, or do most of the normal things you'd expect doctors to do. In 2007, the Virginia Board of Medicine reprimanded and fined Eric Berg for not making it clear that he is a chiropractic doctor, for using techniques that are scientifically and medically unjustified, for false advertising, for lying about developing techniques and keeping inadequate patient records, amongst other things. I expect he had this in mind when he prepared his lengthy YouTube disclaimer, and it might go some way to explain why Eric Berg no longer sees patients. In addition to the reprimand, there's a string of unsettling reviews relating to Eric Berg's wellness center, including a number of people who felt pressured into buying plans and appointments for thousands of dollars that they were unable to subsequently cancel. This video is going to be mostly about Berg's YouTube channel. So what does Dr. Berg do on his channel? Well, he makes short videos about trending health topics and he uses the views and clicks to sell his books, supplements and programs. Berg's focus has been on the ketogenic diet for some time now. His channel started nine years ago and his early videos were mostly testimonials or about his body types theory, probably because he was trying to sell his book. About six years into this, he must have noticed that the ketogenic diet was trending and so he uploaded his first video on this in 2015 and now he's King Keto. Now in principle there's nothing really wrong with keeping up to date with the latest trends in health, sharing them with viewers and even making some money doing it, but Dr. Burke is presenting himself as an expert on health and an original thinker when he really isn't. If you're watching Dr. Burke's channel you're having your health information filtered and presented to you by a biased moron. Not everything you hear from him is going to be totally wrong but why risk it? So let's have a look at some of these mistakes. First up, every health guru's worst nightmare, the pH scale. Berg thinks each step is magnified by 100. And the thing to know is that when you go from a, a 7 to an 8, it's by a power of 100. So it's, um, it's very, very, um, it's not just going up at one number, it's like magnified by 100. The pH scale is a log 10 scale, and so each step is um, magnified by 10. This isn't a bad mistake for a high school student to make, but Dr. Berg is supposed to be busting myths for his audience of 2 million here. Dr. Berg thinks that silica is the second most common element on this planet, but he's wrong. The second most common element on this planet is oxygen. If he thought it was important or relevant, why didn't he get it right? So the real big benefit of diatomaceous earth is the silica. Okay. And by the way, it's the second most prevalent element on this planet other than oxygen, so it's all over the place. Berg has a whole video where he tries to read the label of this cookie butter. He claims that the soybean oil is a GMO. Soybean oil, safflower oil, canola oil, palm oil. Well, I will guarantee that they're probably not going to use palm oil or safflower oil. They're going to use soy oil. Why? Because it's cheap. But the problem is, that's GMO. So they're consuming a really inflammatory type of oil. If it had just headed to the website, he'd have once again found that he's wrong. The company specifically says that the recipe doesn't use GMO ingredients. Not all the soy is GMO. The fact that Biscoff is a European brand should have been a pretty big clue. This is an unfortunate mistake to make when Berg is trying to teach people how to read labels. And for anyone wondering, the website has appeared in that form for at least three years before Berg uploaded this video. Berg frequently makes unjustified digs at genetically modified organisms, but that will have to be a subject for a different video. On the topic of reading the labels, in this fun video, Dr. Berg wanders around the supermarket looking for foods containing MSG, but he somehow got it into his head that modified food starch is another name for MSG. Here's another one, modified food starch. Modified food starch. Here's another one, modified food starch. Here's another monosodium glutamate. Modified food starch. Modified food starch, MSG. This is pure MSG, monosodium glutamate. Modified food starch, modified sodium glutamate. Whoops, on that last one he actually says modified sodium glutamate, and there is of course no such thing. If Dr. Berg had actually read as many labels as he says he has, he'd have come across a very large number of labels where modified food starch and MSG are separately listed on the same product, which should have told him that they're not the same thing. In fact, in that clip he holds up a can of Campbell's soup, which very likely used both ingredients and listed them separately as you can see here. 
A very basic knowledge of biochemistry would alert him to the fact that starch is a polymer of glucose and MSG is the sodium salt of an amino acid. Modified food starch is essentially tasteless and is used to add texture to food, whilst MSG is used to enhance the flavour of savoury dishes. They're totally different things and there's no industrial process to turn one into the other. Confusing these two things makes it pretty obvious to me that Dr. Berg isn't really sure what starch is and doesn't know what an amino acid is either. In fact, in another clip he refers to a different amino acid, in this case tryptophan, as a protein. Now tryptophan turns into serotonin. It's a natural amino acid. There's no side effects. You want to take it on an um, empty stomach because it's a large, larger protein and it can compete with other proteins that you're eating. Just to clear this up, proteins are polymers of amino acids, and this is the kind of biology that should be very familiar to Dr. Berg, but he just can't seem to get it right. It seems to me that for most of his clips, he's just copied some numbers and text from a random website or video and then spewed it into the camera without ever knowing or bothering to check whether it's accurate. This might help explain our next clip. Artichoke, 644 milligrams of potassium. So it comes in second place, just behind potato. And then we have carbs. 269 grams. Oh my goodness. That is, it beats all the other vegetables for the amount of carbs. So this is really high in carbs per cup. And look at this, 14 grams of sugar. Artichoke is the worst thing you can eat on a ketogenic diet. I'm not especially familiar with American measurement units, but apparently a cup should be about 170 grams, so it's literally impossible for it to contain 269 grams of carbs. If you're an expert in nutrition, mistakes like this should just jump off the page. There's just no way an artichoke would contain more carbohydrates than a potato, and anyone serious about nutrition would have stopped the recording immediately, but Berg just fumbles through it. Berg's use of sources is terrible. On many of his videos, he's copied the video description and pasted it back in without considering that the abbreviation breaks all his links. Some of his sources are linked back to his own hard drive, which you obviously can't access. I guess this is because he is downloading and viewing PDFs in a web browser. Even when you can click through on the links, they're often links to very dubious sources of information, like the Truth About Cancer conspiracy site. And even when he does refer to a more reputable source of information, it often doesn't support his conclusions. Let's take this video on viruses, for example. The thing I want to tell you about viruses is that they can't really harm you unless your cells let them harm you, okay? In other words, you have to be susceptible to the virus. There has to be some weak barrier or weak membrane. And that comes mainly from stress or poor nutrition or even radiation. And there's other things that can trigger viruses. But stress is a big one. Dr. Berg links this scientific paper to support his conclusions in this video. It's a recently published paper in a credible scientific journal, but it doesn't mention stress, and the first line of the abstract says the following. Viral susceptibility and disease progression is determined by host genetic variation that underlies individual differences. And what this means is that the chance that you will develop a viral disease after having been exposed to a virus really depends on your genetics, not on your stress levels. The source he is using contradicts what he is saying. I think it's also worth pointing out that in this video on viral disease, Dr. Berg essentially dismisses the most important way that you can prevent viral disease, protecting yourself from exposure. In fact, Berg seems to be suggesting that because viruses are everywhere, this strategy just won't work. However, as I'm sure we all know, you can avoid contracting HIV, Ebola, herpes and smallpox, as well as many other dangerous viral infections with physical barriers and by avoiding endemic areas. Berg's focus on stress is most likely because he has been confused by latent viral infections which can be reactivated by environmental factors, including stress. I don't really think that Dr. Berg is all that interested in the accuracy of his videos, so perhaps he can't really be blamed for all of this. The reason he makes these videos, in my opinion, is to get people into his clinic, reading his books, and shelling out for his supplements. Take this video, for example, on radiation exposure when you fly. The first half of the video concerns the subject matter, and Dr. Berg spends the full second half of this video selling his books. I don't know if the books are any good, but I highly doubt it. Some of the more informative reviews say that The Seven Principles of Fat Burning by Eric Berg contains rehashed information presented as if it's new content. Certainly sounds like Berg's style. 
Let's take a look at his supplement store. Probably my favourite thing for sale here is the Trace Mineral Solution. The description of this product is so bad it's funny. According to Dr. Berg's website, we need more than 70 trace minerals. The real number is much smaller. Admittedly, this is still an area of debate and research, but given what is known about metals in biology, many of the supposed trace elements listed on the label are incredibly dubious candidates. For example, there's no good reason to think that the human body is even capable of utilising the platinum group metals due to their lack of reactivity and there's certainly no scientific evidence to prove that they are required by the human body. Some of the things listed here aren't even trace minerals. Niacin, for example, is better known as vitamin B3 and certainly wouldn't be extracted from a 70 million year old peat bog as the advertisement claims. The text also claims that the plant-based minerals have much less tighter bonds than rocks, so they are very easily absorbed by our bodies. It then makes the intriguingly irrelevant claim that plant-based minerals are 10,000 times smaller than rock minerals and that the technical term for this is covalent bonding. All of this is very badly confused, and if they really did dig down into a 70 million year old Cretaceous peak bog, they certainly wouldn't be pulling out anything that could be reasonably described as plant-based. I have a lot of issues with Dr. Berg and his ideas, his fear-mongering about vaccines and chemicals, his baseless opposition to GMOs, his selling of the ketogenic diet as a panacea, and his musings on cancer and chronic disease. I'm sure that a lot of people will tell me that they have lost weight following Berg's plans or videos, and my response to that is simple. Berg didn't invent the ketogenic diet. It's been around since the 1920s. If you're watching Berg for his keto tips, that's great, but you're also getting a whole truckload of bad information and sales pitches for dodgy supplements and expensive kits. Some people probably think that Dr. Berg is harmless or that he's just sharing information, but when he's telling 2 million people to take oregano oil for a UTI, encouraging potentially vulnerable people to avoid their flu shot, or trying to convince people that UV from the sun doesn't cause cancer, it's pretty obvious that some of these people are going to get hurt. This video actually took me a very long time to make. Unlike Dr. Berg, I've really tried to get the facts right. I sat through hours of Berg's videos, I scripted and rescripted it, I recorded over almost every stumble and mistake, and so if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have a friend or family member who's buying Berg's supplements or kits, perhaps you can share this video with them. I'm still managing to respond to almost every comment, so let me know what you think of the video or tell me if I got something wrong. I'm planning on making a few shorter videos and these should be out within the next week or so, so subscribe if you'd like to see them.